Welcome to Agrifrica.com, the news and content publishing platform. Every culture in the world makes their own choice of food. Grasshoppers, crickets and grubs may not be to everyone's taste, but perhaps soon we won't have so many choices. Welcome, Mr. Val Valentin. Am I pronouncing it right? Yes. Lovely, lovely. So uh, I wanted to uh, thank you for uh, coming with us uh, to, to, to talk to us today and uh, definitely uh, are quite intrigued about the film that you have uh, produced. If you don't mind introducing it briefly yourself about what the 10 billion and what you as a filmmaker uh, found the importance of producing uh, and directing the 10 billion. What's on your plate? Yes, uh, that's the full title. Uh, you, uh, well, I, I'm a, uh, I, I started uh, uh, entering the, the field of, of uh, food topics with uh, a film on food waste, actually, in 2010. Uh, Taste the Waste uh, was dealing uh, with this uh, staggering amount. A third of our harvest is being discarded around the globe. Uh, is uh, uh, also interesting because this is maybe the biggest resource we have to feed the world, if we are able to dim diminish this amount. But then in the same time, it came to my mind that it's also about production. Uh, the, our climate footprint, of course, is heavily concerned by the way we throw away um, food, but also by the way we, we produce it. And I asked myself, how are we able to feed the world with when the agricultural surface is, is shrinking and the, the population is still growing. And uh, it's, it's not that easy to see that the, the, the major problem is not the growing population, it's the environmental footprint. While it could not grow uh, uh, endlessly, but fortunately, the, in most countries, uh, even in, in, uh, in those that came late, like in Africa, the growth is, is slightly coming to an end uh, so uh, but still it's still a, a, a challenge to feed uh, well the 10 billion that we probably have around the middle uh, of this century so uh, this was my topic how to how to find out uh, which are the solutions we only looked on the topic from the solution side but they are quite different. They are very contrasting. We looked, of course, with the eye of the, 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 the big corporate uh, solutions that um, um, say we are the only ones that can feed these amount of people. And then we also looked on it from the side of rather those who um, um, want to wanna have a sustainable solution that is also uh, um, helping to feed uh, people in the 22nd century and so on. Um, and um, this is actually something we, uh, we should never forget. Uh, the the um, a solution that is good in the short term might be bad in the long term. For instance, the artificial uh, fertilizers we use, um, they are um, kind of uh, um, difficult for the soil. The, the one year you put it on the fields, it's, of course it's increasing your harvest, but it's also um, decreasing uh, the, the, the life in the soil, the, the, the fertility, the humus uh, um, creating bacteria in the soil. So um, next year you have less fertility in the soil, you need more artificial fertilizer. And so it's going on, it's like, like a, a devil's circle. It's, it's making, it's menacing the soil. So this is a, a nice solution on a short term base, but not on a long term. Uh, and it's not easy to get out of this circle once you're in. 
so you've been into the you know the Asiatic countries to see what are the what is the impact of seed soil uh, and in terms of food production. Can you give us a little bit more uh, in terms of your perspective about how these developing countries? Some may argue that India is no longer a developing country, but a developed country. But just for the for the sake of this discussion, let's call it a developing country. Uh, how uh, how are they adapting, and how is it affecting the smallholder farmers? I I I I, I, I not uh, I hesitate to use the the terms developed and developing, but anyway, yes. there is a big difference, and that that's important to. To see which are the solutions that really help in the in the field of agriculture, the solution the, the, the big difference is that in the industrialized world the wages are so high that also the farmer need to mechanize, and they their solutions are definitely different. They 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 are not able to uh, to easily switch to organic farming without having a higher price level in this in this uh, uh, spectrum but on the other hand the wages in countries like india are so low that they don't need this uh, highly capitalized uh, mechanized system it's even it's even bad because you have a lot of people that want to work that need to work and uh, um, the solutions that are important for those countries are much more labor intensive and that's a, a good thing because uh, if you look at the studies, how are uh, what what are the um, uh, what is the crop in a, in, a, in a hectare or in an acre of land? What is uh, how can you achieve the a better harvest uh, in a in a mechanized way with a big plantation? You always have lower uh, ret uh, lower returns, lower Harvests then um, with uh, um, uh, labor-intensive smallholder farming, they are always have a better yield per hectare per acre, and that's that's the interesting thing. They they are not the same amount of of modern chemistry and and, and machines, and still they are uh, uh, they have a a, 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 be a better yield. Yes, because they can uh, deal with uh, uh, um, uh, soil differences uh, on, on, a, on a very small base. They can intensively uh, look on, on, on veggies uh, and uh, maybe the only thing that is, uh, um, is um, on, 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 on. if you have a, a, a surface that is, is flat, um, you, you might not need this, and if you have um, uh, um, um, plants like uh, um, corn or, or, or wheat, you might also um, be able to have the same yields with, uh, with me mechanized agriculture. But the moment you enter into, uh, into more complicated uh, produce, it's always the smallholders that have better yields. So in terms of um, what, if, if we had to compare, uh, for instance, the Af Africa, Af the African continent and South Asia or Asi Asiatic countries, what would you say are the similarities or the differences in terms of seed, soil and production um, based on, your, based on uh, your experience and your knowledge of this? Looking on Asia and Africa, um, uh, there's, Still a big difference because Asia really is able to to feed on the on a on a on a surface uh, um, much more people than Africa does currently. This is in some parts of Africa due also to natural facts, but in other parts it's certainly um, uh, also uh, a cultural thing that. Um, these these markets are uh, existing since a, a longer time, and in in Africa with the colonization, a lot of um, markets were organized that way that that their their richness was extracted. Of course, this this is not anymore like this uh, in in theory, 
in the last uh, 50 years, uh, colonialism ended, but still the, the market system is still the, an, an extractive one, uh, unfortunately. Um, but Africa always was able to, to export food. Now it needs to, to import food. So this is a bad development uh, we, we, we had in the last years. Um, and um, this is mainly due to, to, to economic facts. It's not only population growth that makes it impossible. There's still space in Africa to, to feed these people. But uh, the moment you have uh, um, uh, a situation where, where big farmers come in, they, they say it's a solution. We want to feed these people. No, it's the contrary. These big farms are chasing away uh, smallholders uh, or taking them their water. And what are these people going to do? They only can go, can go to the slums in the city. They, they have no other way. So it's increasing hunger and not decreasing. There would be better solutions out to, uh, to, uh, to look. Um, a corona, for instance, also made it, made it worse because um, the, the situation of the smallholders, they, they were not in some, when the lockdown was, uh, took place in, a, in, in some countries, they were not able to send to, 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 to bring their food into the cities to, to sell their food. Um, but the supermarkets, they still continue to operate. So uh, a, a big farmer working with machines, producing food, selling it to supermarkets, which usually in a lot of African countries only cater the rich. The, 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 the normal people, they, they, they buy their food from the farmers that come into the cities to sell their food. And in this case, this chain was interrupted and we will have a lot of damage now this is trying to, to rebuild again, but we will have a lot of damage uh, in the traditional way of, of selling food. And I would say, why not giving the smallholders access um, to, um, to modern knowledge, modern technology, but those who pretend they wanna just help the, the smallholders with giving them, I don't know, seeds, uh, from the, 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 co the corporate seeds, they are actually no help because the farmers have to buy them every year from you. They are constructed in a way, of course, I mean, they are not, uh, not, not charities. They, they want to, they are corpor corporations that want to earn money. They, uh, they have built their seeds in a way that in the next year they're losing fertility and two years after that, it's almost nothing. So the farmer has to buy it every year from you. Then he has a good deal, but this is, first of all, he needs a lot of capital. None of the smallholders has capital. And second, he needs uh, uh, fertilizers and, and pesticides. Another, uh, another need of capital, which is also a problem in, in most of these countries. So the solutions that are out from the, from the agro business are not really uh, helpful for the smallholders. We need to find other solutions, seed that are existing, but they need to be improved, of course. And uh, there's, they, they, that, there the Africans really can, can learn from Asia because in the South of Asia, there's huge uh, um, um, organizations that organize the, the exchange of traditional seeds and the improvement, of course, when we need to, to, to go on. Uh, of traditional seeds like Navdanya in, in India or Masipak in the Philippines. And uh, th this is really a, a model for, for a lot of other countries. And so what is your perspective about that in terms of how you saw cooperatives being formed and really do they have an impact in the market and to be it in terms of the production side or in the market side? Well, uh, uh, to the moment farmers gather um, is, is always a moment where they have access to, uh, to more possibilities. Like I told you, the, the initiatives of farmers that, that uh, conserve and exchange their seeds uh, and improve. Um, but also when they, for instance, if, you, if I look on, on those, on those uh, um, uh, 
projects of cooperation. Um, there's so many projects that only deal with large farming. I mean, there, there are no help for those countries that they put money, but they do more damage than help. But I wouldn't say all of them are bad because there's, uh, there's some projects managed to find out, okay, we need a group of farmers. They need, they have, their problem is that when they have um, their harvest ready, the, the people that, the traders, they come in and, uh, uh, and buy, um, buy this, the, the harvest for a very low price. If they can wait, conserve their harvest for some time, they can hopefully sell it for a better price. And they avoid what happens in a lot of times, the harvest gets rotten. We have a lot of, a big, big share of the harvest, unfortunately, getting damaged uh, before it's getting sold. So uh, one of the, the very good projects is uh, like, for instance, if you have maize farming in Mozambique, I've seen, I've seen this uh, project, with, which is really uh, um, a, a very good one, a drying machine for, for the maize harvest. Uh, and afterwards they sell this to a brewery which is um, a, a good money and the farmers in, 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 uh, in this situation would never be able to have a, a drying machine for one farmer only. They need to, to come together like 20, 30 farmers at least. You now food security is part of the SDG goals. Uh, it's, 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 there's a big push about uh, agribusiness, on the, especially on the African continent. And I would say perhaps also in Asia and so on and so forth. Um, what is your take about this big push about agribusiness? Let's do mass, mass, uh, you know, a large scale of production in the agricultural. And then you have cor corporations and larger companies going to take land in certain of these countries to produce uh, food. What's your uh, view about that? We have been, uh, we have seen a lot of. Uh a lot of moves that, that came into, I mean, two examples from Africa, for instance, there was a, a very good uh, program of um, that uh, actually the German corporation did in, in Malawi, uh, where farmers uh, multiplied their seeds, uh, improved it and, so, and to, sold it to other farmers. Um, and then the government decided not to allow anymore that the farmers sell their seeds. They were forced by law to only buy corporate seed uh, that are made in big labs, imported and cost a lot of money. So uh, this is not in the interest of one of the poorest countries uh, in Africa, um, but I don't know how the corporations managed to convince the government. Uh, this doesn't sound like uh, a, a free decision, but uh, this happened not only in, in, in Malawi, it happened unfortunately also in other countries. Um, and I would, I would say the, the, the solutions that are imposed, they are um, most probably they, are, they, they, they came into place um, by, um, by bribing uh, officials. I mean, for instance, um, I, I know it from from those farmers who uh, who bought big surfaces in Mozambique. Um, you're not able to to work there without bribing any uh, officials. I mean, you, you have to know the one is the right one. But then, it's it doesn't make it doesn't play any role if there are some small holders in the region that you're you're purchasing or not. Um, there. Your, you have the situation where they are being pushed to some uh, parts of uh, the region where there's still land, less fertile, but there's still land over, and you take the big chunk, the most fertile one. And it, it happened uh, with um, in Mozambique, um, mostly for soybean fields, soybeans that Part of it is being used in the country, but uh, they are now constructing a railway to it, export it to India, uh, to, to China. And this, this is the kind of solutions. I mean, from these farms, 
the, the revenue is not for the country. They are even exempted from, from taxes for 10 years. Uh, and even the, 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 the smallholders that are chased away, when they, they, they can be happy if they have a low wage job on the field, um, in, in, but not, a, not many of them. So uh, it's definitely uh, um, uh, making the situation worse in the region when a, a big farm is coming in, it's it's not a. We should we should instead of giving uh, land to big owners that are sitting. In this case, this was a U.S. farmer. He was he was purchasing land with uh, uh, and the, of course the revenues got back to the U.S. Um, but we, we should focus on how to improve the situation of the smallholders. Get them. The possibility to grow and to deal better with their harvest. Um, this should be in the interest of the government as well. I believe when the shit hits the fan, it will do. There will be a perfect storm of food crisis in the world. Made this movie was in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, um, and now we are in 2021, beginning 2021. So, what would you say you've seen as a difference, especially since you follow uh, a lot of what's happening in the ag space for quite some time? Uh, just reading about you and and seeing what you have been doing for the last, uh, I would say, 20 to 30 years of your life. Uh, so would you what what are the differences or what are, what do you see in terms of measurable impact within the last five to six years? Um, well, the situation in some places have uh, is worse now. There have been droughts hit Eastern Africa uh, even more than than we've seen when we shut there in uh, five years ago. Um, it's um, in combination with Corona, it's 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 really a, a, a problem right now. I would say there is still hope because the the uh, the farmers associations are in 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 some countries have got stronger. They have there is um, some kind of look. For instance, that on India, the the government is trying to impose neoliberal uh, uh, um, a, a trade situation where a lot of food will be able to be imported and the farmers that used to have part of their their base was that they could sell to to uh, uh, to canteens to, to public services and they they want to keep it and now there's there's millions of farmers are protesting right now in India so uh, this it, it will be almost impossible for the government to continue that way. And uh, I've seen also in other countries that there is, it's not, a, it, there is of course, like the, the example I told, I gave from, from Malawi, there's of course this, um, 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 some governments that are not interested to also, they do not invest in, 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 in local agriculture. And other countries like Rwanda, they did invest in local agriculture, fortunately. They also invested in industry, which is fine. And uh, the same thing I discovered in, in, in Asia countries that like, like Thailand, for instance, one of the, the biggest rice exporters, they do not allow foreigners to buy land. They, they simply do not, they, they, they don't need, they have farmers and they are, certainly less mechanized than in the industrialized world, but they, um, and, and also you don't have a policy where they impose the farmers corporate seed. The farmers there, they are convinced, okay, we have, our seeds are the best for this climate because we developed them for centuries or even mm -hmm. millenniums. So um, we, we, we stay with our seeds, we don't need, the ones that are coming from outside. They are improved in the lab, but on the field, if there is a, a difficult weather situation, we lose all our harvest. No, we don't want them. So there is hope because there is also 
um, governments and, and civil societies in some countries that uh, oppose this, um, this, of course, this, this attempt to, 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 to get hold of, of markets. Of course, the, it's, it's actually it's our corporations there in Germany, in the US, and that want to conquer these countries. And we, we, we should help. Uh, if we can, the, the the farmers down there with in, in making public what are that the solutions that are being uh, proposed by Bayer and Monsanto that are not helping against hunger, they are worsening the situation. So, in terms of um, so just a, perhaps just a, a snapshot of what are the three solutions. Aside from what you've mentioned in terms of what you've seen in these specific countries, such as Philippines and Rwanda and so on, in terms of what their different approaches, as you see us within the next five years, what are the solutions that you, you'd say, well, these are the three top solutions that farmers especially, and I know I agree with you, you know, putting the construct of developing and developed countries is, is quite, you know, it's nuanced, but it's countries in Africa or Asia. Uh, what are the top three solutions that you say these are the things that they should be doing or they are doing and they should be exchanging this information or knowledge? Well, in the global south, they, they, they should not follow the advices of uh, um, the big corporations of the industrialized world. What is working here is a totally different situation. We are going back now and look for how to regionalize our agricultural and, and food system. Uh, we could learn now from Africa where it still exists. Uh, so they should really um, strengthen their regional uh, food systems. I wouldn't say for our produce. I mean, there is uh, like, like, like grain, you can transport it easily for longer distances, but everything fresh is really, uh, and, and, and especially because it also helps resilience to have the base of the food from the, the own country. If there is a, a problem, like we've seen the, we have seen food crisis from uh, issued from the, the stock markets, but now we have seen also one issued from a pandemic. So we should, to, to have a resilient food system, we should rely on, on production in the own country, in the own region, uh, this is the first thing every, all countries, not only the global south, also the north should follow. And then, of course, we, we can have trade, but the, 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 the trade shouldn't be um, uh, the, main, the main income for, for the farmers, because the more dependent they are from trade, the more uh, um, the, the, their income will, will go up and down. It's, uh, it's, it, it can be that volatile that in, 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 in half a year they have enough to eat and then the, the other half of the year they are, they are starving. So we should look for more stability, which is not the world market, unfortunately. The world market will always be volatile. We shouldn't rely on the world market to feed the people. The world market is something uh, on top for those products that uh, are not the base in my eyes. And then, um, of course, if we want to look, and because this is crucial for, for any place, uh, uh, on more climate-friendly ways of producing food, uh, the first thing would be probably really uh, trying to uh, to reduce food waste. This would be the first thing. The second thing would be maybe not having a, a strict uh, way of. I mean, the, the the way what what we did in 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 the north in the global north was constructing a system of of organic farming that, of course, is is climate friendly, but um, it's been made for anonymous markets or with supermarkets. And more, I, I think it's too expensive because the certification needs a lot of control. 
that it, it would be rather important to rely on on mm, smaller farmers that have and if they improve if they have new techniques it should be rather um it should be rather developed by by um government finance result, uh, research and not so much by by research being financed by the agro business because yeah they want to make money they they, they they their solutions are always costly so um but there is very efficient solutions out that do not mean uh, more fertilizer which is very bad for the climate the, the nitrogen fertilizer uh, a third of it goes into the atmosphere uh, and really is a, is a very uh, very uh, difficult uh, um, a climate gas so uh, if we can reduce this if we can come back to forms of agriculture that cost less that uh, pollute less uh, this will help the climate and then in in, in the next generations to farm um, in a way uh, as we do now uh, because when the when climate warming is continuing we will have less and less yields that will be uh, that will be a disaster so in, in terms of um as as we we as we talk about this, one of the the, the main things I've I've learned uh, from your film and as also from reading about you is it's very near and dear to you because uh, although the other films were uh, in German, uh, I know that you've made another movie about taste uh, the waste. Uh, taste the waste this, is in yeah. English, but probably not yeah. available online. Yeah. Yes, so that one, but the, you you made other movies as well uh, that were in German, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And, and yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So these two movies are Taste the Waste and uh, Billion are mainly in English. Um, and so in terms of so just a pattern and having read uh, about you, it's very near and dear to you. you, you know, the environment issue, the, the food issue, food security, and in terms of uh, recalibrating somewhat capitalism to a certain degree, because as you quite uh, eloquently said, is, you know, it's one seed you, it's, they, bring, they, give you, they sell you one seed to make sure that you buy another seed then, by the, the next year. So how do you, why is it so dear to you? Uh, and it might sound just a fluffy question, but it would be good to, to know a little bit why you have dedicated so much of your mm -hmm. life into this. No, there's, it's, it's uh, definitely, there is a biographic re reason. Uh, I mean, of course, there's also a professional one, uh, but uh, I, I'd say the, the personal one is the more important. I have been raised by my mother really um, with... Uh, uh, food is holy, uh, you don't throw away, but uh, this goes back to her experience after the war where she was in a, in a, in a, in a camp being, uh, um, well, the, my, my, my family comes from Eastern Europe and uh, has been, uh, um, and they, they, it's, it's not a concentration camp in the style of the Nazis, but still a third of the, the, the people there died from hunger so she had a personal experience from hunger and uh, three years uh, as, a, as a child she was there and uh, this I mean I, I even didn't know until I was 40 because she didn't tell me about this is the story I, but the, the whole way she dealt with food and how precious it is this came was part of my education so uh, certainly there is a big connection to that. And then I discovered, oh, this is a problem for the whole world. We just forgot about it in, in, in Europe because we have so much money right now to buy everything at any time of the year. But uh, it wasn't always like that. And it's, it's, there's no, no guarantee that it will stay like that. So this is the, the, mo the, the biggest thing that we think, okay, it will stay like that. How, how can we? The in terms of um, and thank you so much for answering this question. Um, do you see any? I would say every one of us have to see some hope in all of this. Uh, but given the climate change issues, uh, the the lack of adaptability for certain countries, uh, drought as you mentioned, um, there are many different elements to the environment that is happening right now that we're not paying attention to. Um, what do you foresee in the next year? Uh, 
or two or three or four, or at least by 2028 uh, or 2024 and then 2028. Positive development in, uh, in population growth, um, at least in most of the countries. I mean, the, the number one reason that it's, it's flattening is the actually uh, ed education, especially education of young women. The moment they have, um, um, uh, they go to school, they're not, uh, they're not married that early. And they, they also think twice about how many ch children I want to have. Um, unfortunately, not everywhere, especially the Muslim world is not, um, is not really on a good track in this. Um, um, so we, we, we still have to continue with this question. Um, to to uh, to get to a more balanced way, um, but it's the number one uh, 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 thing in the next five or ten years is how we can manage to decrease our climate footprint. It's it's incredible. I mean, especially Americans, but also Europeans. We we will live like. Oh, 20 times more footprint than an average Indian. That's incredible. And this is our main task for the next years to, to find and uh, to, to reorganize our economy um, in a way that it's uh, that our uh, children and grandchildren still can live on this planet. 99% of the food that's consumed is shipped in from over 1,500 miles away. That is what we have to change. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Valentin. Uh, this has been very informative, insightful. Uh, it's an honor for me to, to speak to you because I just uh, adored the, the, the documentary. I think it spoke to my soul and spirit. So thank you so much. Um, and definitely I'll be following uh, your, your, your work as well in terms of the film industry and at the same time in the environmental uh, industry. Thank you. If you have any last words, Phil, please uh, let me know. I, I'm happy that uh, I could speak to you and uh, please keep me informed about your uh, activities and publications. Wonderful. Will do. Thank you so much, Mr. Valentin. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> have a nice one. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Too. You will find aggregated content, curated content, jobs, events, and different resources in regards to agriculture, energy, and environment, including investment in these three sectors. Check us out at www.agrifrica.com.